Of all the smartphones that you can buy today, few have the kind of history and widespread recognition that the Samsung Galaxy Note does. Only the iPhone comes close, but I think a big part of that is because, like the Note, the iPhone started something that basically changed the world. Obviously, the Note's prestige is also helped out by the fact that, as a device, the smartphone was almost always unrivaled. Some might even call it the everything phone, and you could make a pretty convincing argument that it was. But it's no easy task making the best smartphone every single year. It's not easy every year, frankly speaking. And if you ask me, they've definitely missed the mark in the past. However, when they do nail it, like they did with the Galaxy Note 9, the results are often quite remarkable. So that brings us to the Samsung Galaxy Note 10, and which side of the fence this brand new smartphone falls on. The days leading up to the launch were a little bit of a roller coaster ride, if I'm being honest. First leaks planted a seed of doubt in my mind, but the subsequent launch and initial hands-on restored my faith in this smartphone. It sure as heck looked like Samsung had a killer smartphone on their hands. But that's the thing about spending a couple of minutes with a phone in a store versus actually using it as your daily driver. In just two weeks with the phone, I found its fatal flaw, its Achilles heel, and honestly, I was so surprised and a little disappointed because it came from the most unexpected part, the smartphone. Before we get to that though, let's start at the top with what Samsung gets right with the Note 10. When people ask me what's good about the Galaxy Note 10, I always start with the screen because it is the single most jaw-dropping feature about this handset. I mean, Samsung screens have always been some of the best in the business, but the Galaxy Note 10 is amazing even by Samsung standards. Yes, the panel is a massive 6.8-inch dynamic AMOLED display with a Quad HD Plus resolution that also bleeds over the edges of the smartphone. Sure, it has great viewing angles for an OLED and it looks really crisp and vibrant. All Samsung flagship displays are like this. What sets the Galaxy Note 10 Plus apart are the lengths to which Samsung have gone to shave down the bezels. It's ridiculous and it's one that you really have to see for yourself in person to really appreciate. You could argue that the Galaxy S10 Plus also has really slim bezels with a bleeding edge display, but the Note 10 Plus just does it better. Hold it in your hand and it looks almost like it shouldn't exist. At least, not yet. The curve is more abrupt at the sides and the corners are a little more squared off. The chin looks smaller and so does the forehead. The punch hole has been moved to the center so it pulls focus from the corners where the bezels tend to be thicker. It was a combination of inches that all added up to push the Galaxy Note 10 miles ahead of its competition in the race to capture that all-screen phone of the future vibe. It is a crazy looking display and since returning the phone, I have yet to find another that gives me quite the same feeling. And obviously with a Galaxy Note device, this phone has one of the best builds I've ever had the pleasure of using. The glossy metal frame now blends so well into the glass body that I can barely feel where the glass ends and where the frame begins. Oh, and can we please appreciate how rad this Aura Glow colorway is? It's very rare that a smartphone maker absolutely nails the sweet spot where it's showy without being garish, and on the Note 10 Plus, I think Samsung did a very good job. Being a Samsung flagship, the company also kept the internals up to date. For the first time in a while, the Galaxy Note 10 Plus gets an updated processor over its Galaxy S cousin. The Exynos 9825 performed admirably in my time with the device, and the 12GB of RAM and 256GB of internal storage were more than enough for my needs. I also didn't run into any overheating issues while gaming, nor did I experience any major frame rate drops. But I mean, this is to be expected from a Galaxy Note flagship. Samsung also gave their latest phone a fantastic camera setup at the back. The quad camera lineup consists of a 12 megapixel main camera with a variable aperture wide angle lens, a 12 megapixel telephoto camera, and a 16 megapixel ultra wide camera. Plus, it has a depth vision camera that's solely there for 3D and depth effects. 
Photographs in good light look well enough without the overprocessed look of something like a Huawei P30 Pro but with a little more punch than something like an iPhone. Scene Optimizer also makes a return but again it isn't quite as aggressive as Huawei's Master AI which is something I really like so I left it on for the most part. There's also a dedicated night mode but I have to say that this and the zoom range definitely don't compete with something like the Huawei P30 Pro. But while the camera was great at regular photo taking, I was quite disappointed with Samsung's live focus. I'm baffled that after so many years, it still doesn't look quite as nice as what a company like Xiaomi is able to achieve on their budget smartphones. I was, however, rather impressed with the Galaxy Note 10's super smooth video stabilization feature. Yes, it's definitely not perfect because it jitters quite a lot, but it is a marked improvement over the footage with this turned off. Plus, I was running with reckless abandon down a bumpy slope, so I suspect that you'll get much better stabilization if you apply even a modicum of practical stabilization. The big problem, however, is that you're locked in at 1080p if you want to use this video stabilization, which is a bummer. In any case, I'll do a more thorough test of the stabilization in an upcoming camera comparison video. Now though, it's time to look at the Galaxy Note's unique feature, the S Pen. Let me just start by saying that I'm not much of an S Pen user, so I really didn't use the stylus that much during my review period. It was very useful though when it came to taking notes. And I love the optical character recognition or OCR feature that lets the Note 10 Plus read your handwriting because it makes organizing notes so much easier. But beyond that, the other writing and drawing features felt a little too gimmicky for me. I'd honestly be surprised if people used AR Doodle beyond the first couple of times that they mess around with it, and I'd be equally surprised if they used any of the current air commands past the first few twirls either. I think that as a whole, the S Pen is still every bit as good as it was on the Note 9 with great texture and feel, second only to the Apple Pencil outside of any purpose-built styluses. And I really like that it's still Bluetooth enabled so you can use it as a remote for your camera. So if you like the S Pen on the Note 9, you'll probably like this one too. Up to this point, the Galaxy Note 10 Plus has been putting on quite the show. But now it's time to talk about the stuff that this new handset gets wrong. And we'll start with our good old buddy, the 3.5mm headphone jack. Yes, the Galaxy Note 10 Plus is the first Galaxy Note flagship smartphone to axe this long-standing port. And yes, it's just as inconvenient as you think it is. But for me, I think the most upsetting thing is that if Samsung's willing to exit from their everything phone, it's rather unlikely that we'll ever see it return on another Samsung flagship. I've personally made the switch to Bluetooth headphones recently, but that was purely out of coincidence. And I know that not many of you have the luxury to do so or would even want to compromise your listening experience with a switch to wireless. I would have loved to see Samsung include a 3.5mm adapter in the box, but they don't. I guess a silver lining here is that Samsung did upgrade the stereo speakers on the Galaxy Note 10 Plus, but I was honestly expecting them to sound better than they do. Right now, I still don't think that they sound as good as an iPhone XS Max's stereo speakers, so they definitely don't sound as good as a proper pair of front-facing stereo speakers. That being said, these issues for me are still what I call relatively minor. The big issue I have with the Note 10 Plus, however, is with its battery life. I know, right? With a massive 4,300mAh battery, I never thought that this would have been an issue. With the Note 10 Plus on all of its default power optimizations, including keeping the screen at its Full HD Plus resolution, the most I was able to eke out of this phone with moderate usage was between 4.5 to 5 hours of screen on time. If I had an event or if it was one of my heavier days, the phone would be dead before my day even ended. If you're a power user, you'll know that these are not good numbers. These are barely above average for a phone in 2019. What more a phone that's designed for power users? Sure, I appreciate that Samsung's included a new 25W USB-C fast charger in the box that can fully top up the phone in just over an hour. But to me, fast charging doesn't make up for battery life. And neither does fast wireless charging. I want to say that the underwhelming battery life is because Samsung's battery optimizations aren't quite as aggressive as some of their Chinese competitors at Huawei and Xiaomi. 
but that doesn't explain how I still get better battery performance out of a 6 month old Galaxy S10 Plus. Don't get me wrong though, I'm not saying that the Note 10 Plus's battery life is bad. It's about average, so most light users should be able to get through an entire day with a single charge. But the thing is, the Galaxy Note 10 Plus is supposed to be for power users. A phone for people who want zero compromises, and when you're catering to that market, I don't think these numbers will cut it. This then makes my job a little harder than it really should have been. After the announcement and all of the first impressions, I was under the impression that the Galaxy Note 10 Plus would be the easy default when it comes to Android phones. Like the kind of phone you could recommend to anyone and guarantee them a great experience. But now it's a little hard to recommend to power users and that's a shame because I really enjoyed my time with the Note 10 Plus. It's got amazing scores in practically every other category you want in a flagship smartphone. Plus, it also benefits from Samsung's invaluable ecosystem features like Samsung Pay and even the new Samsung DeX. Speaking of which, the new DeX is definitely more useful than the old version, but it's still a little too finicky for me to rely on as a daily driver. But it does come in handy when you're in a pinch. These are features that you won't find on any other non-Samsung flagship many of which are genuinely useful. So I guess the bottom line here is this. Despite the fact that the Galaxy Note 10 Plus's battery is not quite where I want it to be, it's still not what I classify as dreadful. And because everything else about this phone is really, really good, I would still say that this is the best Android phone you can pick up today. Just keep a power bank handy for those heavier days. However, if you think that 5 hours of screen on time is enough for you, then the Note 10 Plus is unquestionably a class above the rest.